Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are looking at some advanced EAA techniques. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little Astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And having said all that, let's get down to the topic of this video. Alrighty guys, so as you can see tonight, we are running the Takahashi TOA 130 for our telescope. Uh, the camera that we are going to be using is the ASI 294 MC Pro. Uh, basically guys, uh, so what I wanted to demonstrate today is essentially um, how to use dark frames and flat frames to greatly improve uh, the image quality of your EAA without doing any type of secondary processing. Alrighty guys, now if you're not familiar with what flat frames and dark frames are, uh, basically, just a really brief uh, summary, dark frames are uh, taken with the lens cap on on your telescope. Basically, um, what that does is it helps to eliminate hot pixels of your camera. What flat frames do conversely is you take them uh, with uh, even illumination uh, with, the, uh, with the cap off of your camera. Um, and what that does is help to kind of eliminate all of the artifacts such as dust on your objective and then anywhere in the optical train and also um, uneven illumination of the whole field. Um, so that's just kind of a brief summary. If you're curious, you know, do a little bit of research online. There's a huge amount of info about this online. Alrighty guys, so here's what we're gonna do. So you are going to start uh, sharp cap uh, like normal. And the first thing that we're going to do is to uh, capture our dark frames because the scope cap's already on, so it's gonna be nice and easy. Now for dark frames, uh, you know, you're gonna wanna, of course, select your camera. Um, the most important thing for dark frames is that you don't have any light bleed, so, you know, make sure you're kind of in a darker, hopefully, area and that type of deal. Uh, and the other thing that you're gonna wanna do is if you do have a cooler on your camera, you're gonna wanna turn it on and uh, set it to the temperature that you're gonna be running it at. Uh, so for me, uh, right now it's kind of getting already in the spring. Normally during the winter I cool to negative uh, 20 degrees. Right now I am going to be cooling to negative 10 degrees. So you want to uh, set your dark frames to something that you could always cool to. So basically we got the cooler going on. Um, and then if you're not familiar, this is kind of like the area right here where it shows you the current temperature. So right now uh, you know, we're still like, you know, pretty far away from 10 to 10, uh, negative 10 degrees. So, we'll, you know, we'll kind of pretend that we're already um, at that basically spot. Alrighty guys, so at this point, what you're going to want to do is we're going to go to uh, capture and then we're going to go to capture dark. Okay, so what you want to do, um, you know, the number of dark frames that you want to capture, 25 is fine. Um, you don't need like a billion of them. Uh, so basically what you want to do before you capture this though guys is that you are going to want to go to your settings here and set all your settings to whatever you're going to be using um, you know for your actual EA stacks. So like in my case a lot of times what I do is um, I do uh, five second exposures. So we will uh, set that to five, and then you also want to set your gain. So for me, I do use 300 gain uh, and for this particular rig, so I'm good to go. So you do want to make sure, you know, again, that your cooler is on, that it's uh, turned on, or that it's cooled down to whatever temperature you're going to be actually shooting at, and that uh, your specs here are set to whatever you want, or whatever you're going to be shooting with, I guess. I mean. All right, so at this point, you'd basically start and uh, it will do everything for you. Pretty simple. Alrighty guys, well, with the dark side of the way, we are onto capturing flats. So guys, there's a couple of different ways to capture flats. Uh, if you have a nice blue sky on that particular day and you have nothing else to use, you could actually use just a blue sky to capture flats. The way that I do it is, you know, just something that I kind of found online. Basically I use, you know, this is actually just white t-shirt material. Um, I've got it on one of these like fabric spreader type of deals. Uh, I'll have a link to one of these, uh, you know, if you want to build one of these. Uh, you do not want to have spots on it like mine does. Uh, so I'm going to make sure that I only use you know, the part that has the spots on. I actually need to change this fabric. It's kind of old already. But basically, this kind of helps to get you that really even illumination. So you're going to slip this over uh, so you know the dust cap is already off at this point. 
Uh, you're gonna slip that over the scope. And uh, what I actually use, and again, I'll have a link to one of these as well, is a graphic artist, uh, basically it's an LED pad that lights up, you know, just totally white. It connects to, with, uh, to power with USB, and then basically it gives you a pretty, you know, darn good, nice uh, flat illumination. So one thing that I did want to know, guys, is that when you are doing uh, flat fields, um, basically what you need to make sure is that your focuser is already set to the focus of your camera basically uh, because that will affect you know uh, how the flat's going to turn out also uh, however you're going to be shooting with your camera uh, the rotation also matters uh, you know of the camera itself so make sure that you know however you're going to be doing your EAA that you know your rotation of the camera is already locked the way that it's supposed to be and then you'll want to pre-focus, you know, like maybe the previous night or the same night if you're doing the flats, you know, at night, uh, you, know, on, you know, on the star or something like that before you start taking your flat images. Alrighty guys, so with the flat illumination all set up and rigged up, so what we're going to do is come back to our software here. And uh, basically we are going to once again do capture and then this time we're going to do capture flat so now here guys what you're trying to do is uh, actually you're going to be adjusting the settings here um, to where the histogram is where we want it to be all right let me uh, zoom out here so you kind of see the histogram. Okay, so what we're trying to do is, uh, and basically this one that right here will tell you when you're, you know, when you're good. See how uh, right now it says histogram is okay. Uh, so I believe you want it to be like somewhere between like, um, uh, I believe if I remember correctly, it's like 30 and 70% is ideal. Uh, so anyway, Let's see here, let's go and kind of do the, the, okay, so yeah, so now, you know, we're basically between 30 and 70%. Window says histograms okay, it's happy, and at this point, you know, you just start, you hit, uh, you know, start to capture your flat, and you are good to go. Alrighty guys, it is night time. The rig is all set up and ready to rock and roll. We are aligned on Capella out there. Let's do some EAA. Good stuff. Well, it's morning time, guys. I uh, hope all you guys enjoyed the little clips that I posted in of the EAA that I did that night after capturing the dark and the flat frames. So just real quick, I just wanted to show you guys the difference uh, between uh, having dark frames and flat frames and not having them. I took uh, pictures of NGC 1931, uh, which is also known as the Mini Orion Nebula. Um, so let's check it out. Alrighty guys, so basically what I did was that about a five minute uh, EAA stack um, of the nebula. Um, and then so this, uh, the left hand side here that I'm showing you, this is the side that had um, no flat frames or dark frames. Now guys, I will point out that the TOA-130, the scope that we were working with last night, it has an incredibly wide uh, um, image and circle, so uh, the flat frames didn't do too horribly much for us. Um, and then, you know, the, the, these modern CMOS cameras, they do have a pretty clean uh, sensor, so... Uh, with a lot of different scopes, though, guys, you would see a much, uh, you know, greater difference, you know, with, you know, utilizing flat frames. Uh, but anyhow, so dark frames, so let's start with that. So, do you guys see this right here? This red pixel, blue pixel, and then this one's kind of cool because it kind of has like a whole trail that's probably, of, uh, you know, the tracking error of the mount sensor that we had going on. So this is what dark frames do. This is what they help to eliminate for you. Matter of fact, let's see if we could zoom in on the same area on the image 
on the side here. Let's see. So we're, I'm kind of just looking for the same pattern of stars, which I think we have identified. Okay, so check this out. See this cross right here? And this is the cross right there, all right? So same, you know, same area of the sky. So the blue pixel that's right here is totally gone here. The red pixel is gone from up here. And then this blue trailing one, I think is kind of further out here, but it's also gone as well. So pretty cool. And so this, you know, this is obviously like this whole, like, you know, like hot pixel, you know, effect, you have them kind of all across the frame. Like here's a green one, here's a trailing green one, here's a trailing red one. So anyway, the darks get rid of all that. So pretty cool, right? Alrighty guys, so what about the flat frames? What did those do for you, you might ask? Well guys, like I said, the TY-130 has an incredibly big image in circle. So um, as you can see, we don't really have like any type of vignetting going on here. And you know, the, the ASI 294 MC Pro that I'm shooting with, it doesn't have like a huge sensor. So the TOA illuminates it very well actually. So the, the clearest thing that I could show you guys of what the flats helped us with is, you know, check this out, uh, this area right here. Uh, see how we had this kind of like blotch. I don't know if this is like dust on the objective or kind of like what's going on with that, but um, you know, pretty obvious in the image here uh with the no flats also um it doesn't show up too terribly well but there is actually a little bit of uh unaiming illumination like on this side of the frame especially the way that i'm recording on the computer monitor is not showing up well but i know um so on the other side here guys so check this out like where i had that you know kind of uneven illumination it's essentially totally gone like if i really look for it i can't kind of see it but basically non-existent. Alrighty guys, so overall, if you are not using flat and dark frames in your EAA stacks and you're kind of, you know, progressed like, you know, beyond like the first initial kind of excitement of EA, you know, this is something that you could do that doesn't really cost any money per se. I mean, you know, the flat frame illumination setup, you know, would cost, you know, like, I don't know, like 30, 40 bucks if you want to do that. You could, again, just do it off the sky. Uh, so anyhow, if you guys have any questions, comments, or anything like that, I'll leave them in the thing below. If you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.